everybody. Looks like we made it to yet another Wednesday. So good to see everybody. Uh, we are doing part three of painting this beautiful portrait in airbrush using my India ink mixtures such as this. Today we're going to be going with the medium mixture which is going to be pretty exciting. Start getting things a little bit darker. So that is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and work on our traditional uh, setting up the chat viewer here. Let's see. Just have to go here. Authorize the chat and give me a quick moment. Let's see how many people are here today. I can't believe it's uh, September 25th already. How crazy. Time seems to be going at record speed for me. I don't know why. Okay, so putting in my password. And I should see if I hear crickets or we have people here in the room today. Okay, so. All right, so I don't see anyone just yet. That's cool. Um, okay, so I'm just going to very quickly go to my YouTube here and see if anyone is here. And okay, so it looks like no one is here just yet, but we are at part three. And let's see if I can go ahead and edit something real quick. Just be one second, guys, and we'll get everything set up here. Okay, so it looks like we are all set. Now all I have to do is go ahead and uh, start working. So this is part three, and this is probably going to be, I would say, a five-part series because parts one and two, we were basically working on just the light mixture, getting things sort of sketched in. Getting a lot of uh, contrast, relative, relative value contrast, and everything like that. Getting the major shapes down. So, right now I have my Patriot Extreme, actually my Badger Extreme Patriot Arrow, and I'm going to be working on the contrast. So we're going with the medium mixture which is significantly darker than the light mixture. So I'm able to go in and start getting some contrast here, but by no means is it any close, close at all to the dark of the dark mixture. Okay. So as you see, I'm using my freehand shield to reiterate this hard edge right there.
think I got a little overzealous right there. Good to see you. You're the first one here this week. How are you, my friend? So what I'm doing right now is just uh, going in with the uh, medium mixture. And we're just going to start darkening things up a little bit. Uh, you know, we've been doing the uh, light mixture for a while. Actually, the first two parts. And it'll be fresh, refreshing to go in with a little darker value right now. Uh, doing good, Joe. Thanks so much for asking. I really appreciate that. Before I actually go in, I'm just going to go ahead and do some tests here, making sure it's flowing correctly, which I'm pretty happy with so far. I am, but I'm not. Hey, Diana, how are you? Good to see ya. Thank you so much for coming by. Uh, yes, I'm definitely uh, planning on one in the late autumn uh, right here in Totowa, New Jersey, Joe. I just have to get all the dates and everything set that would be, you know, best for uh, people and you know, I want it to be a class of about 10. So how are you, Diana? I believe this is the first time I've seen you. Or have you been here before, Diana? I think I've seen you once before. Is that correct, Diana? So right here you can see it's... Uh, uh, let me just double check here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and try and reauthorize the chat so I can see you guys. Let's see. Painted. Oops. Uh. Okay, let's see if that does the trick, I hope. Okay, great, fantastic. Tone, how you doing? Good to see ya. So we got Jersey Joe, Diana, and Tone so far. Thanks guys for coming by, I really appreciate it. Always feel free to ask any questions. It's always great to talk with you guys. Tone, I really like the way uh, Mr. Barkley's coming out. Tone is doing a painting of uh, the running back. Uh, uh, begins with an S. I don't quite know how to say his name. Uh, Barkley. Very, very great painting. As you can see with the medium mixture, I move around. Oh, great. Thank you. so much so what I like to do when I have the medium mixture is I like to move around a lot and you know like right here you know you have that sort of uh, you have that sort of long kind of line there what I like to do is do a series of dagger strokes. You have a lot more control. You don't have to get it down perfectly right away. So Diana, are you an airbrush artist as well?
And uh, Tone, did you go ahead and put that on Ink Flingers? And Tone says he likes the hair in this piece uh, and I'm doing it already. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Tone. It's, I, it's uh, a lot more simple. You have these really large dark shapes and then just a couple of indications of lights and pretty much done. Uh, I don't want to get too involved with the hair because it's very time intensive and I don't believe you guys uh, is as learning, you know, it's, it's just basically painting hair, you know, it's, I think it's more interesting the other parts. But what I like to do is try and find those larger shapes. So right here we have some larger shapes. And there's two ways I can do it. I can actually paint with the airbrush as you're seeing it right now. Uh, Oh, thank you, Tone. Tone says he likes watching it all. I appreciate that. And, you know, yeah, I mean, sometimes, you know, we want to see how other artists are doing their hair, that sort of thing, so I can understand that. Now, I'm going to use freehand shields to get darker. Right now, I'm sort of sketching, but sketching a little bit darker with the medium mixture than I was the last two episodes, which was just going in with the light mixture. doing is just basically I don't want to get too involved in one area right now because that could be counterproductive but I am going to use a freehand shield on this very hard edge of the hair here I want to maintain that I want to make sure that she's coming hey brush strokes good to see ya how you been uh, Jake So I want to maintain that hard edge because that's what's going to bring her forward and everything's going to be very soft in the background. So you'll see that things will definitely soften up as I work in the background, pulling her forward. You know, now we have to, you know, now that we have cameras and we have aperture and stuff like that, we really learn a lot about what makes things go back and forward a lot more than even the old masters had. So that's pretty cool. So who out there is uh, using a lot of the uh, computer programs such as Photoshop and different things like that? So any of you guys using that to help with your compositions or something like that? Have you guys started doing that at all? So what I've been doing lately is working on the, the computer program Critter, Krita, K-R-I-T-A. And what I like doing with that is changing the background, uh, uh, you know, getting more uh, intricate and uh, deliberate as to where my darks and light will be in the background so it will accentuate the portrait. So that's been a lot of fun lately. I've been doing that. Have any of you guys done that at all? Uh, Tone says, actually, Brushstroke is asking Tone about his uh, live streams. And Tone's been doing some really, really good stuff on the live stream there. I appreciate that. Appreciate the hard work he's putting in. And 
and I want to go ahead and darken that up but what I have to do is let that dry go back in there don't try and and get it all at one time and this is where you really can start to get more specific with your shapes Now here's a hard edge, so there's a definitely a hard edge here, and I'm going to show you guys so you know what I mean. So if I go over here, you'll see that this is kind of a hard edge right here. So with that being said, I'm actually going to uh, find that shape and then make sure that the edge work is uh, is correct because the edge work and the shape is very important to the success of this painting so what I'm going to do well I'm sorry about that what I'm going to do is just come right here and you know really do that one second rule you know look for a second paint or draw for a second that really helps me to keep me honest and makes actually more difficult aspects of painting a lot easier okay so i'm just going to hit this edge remember par perpendicular and not parallel so, and then I'm going to come over here. There we go. So you see, let me sharpen that up. So you can see getting that edge as hard as possible is very important. There we go. Now we'll go back and you'll see that that edge really was important. So I'm going to just let it dry a little bit and then I'm going to take my kneaded eraser, which is the softest eraser out there, and I'm just going to tap away that pencil line. So now what's just left is, you know, what's there. Hey, Mike, how you doing? How's everything? Photo sketcher, it redoors photos in different styles like watercolor, stained glass. That's great, Mike. Uh, that's really cool. Is it a free software or is it something you purchased? Now here with the eyebrow, we want to make sure at this point we're starting to get more specific. Oh, it's free. Great. Photo sketcher. We'll definitely look for that. That's great. And that's for, uh, is that for Macintosh and Windows alike? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make sure that this is drawn correctly. Just, you know, really what you want to do is you want to see where the eyelash sort of stops and the eyelash stops at the corner of the eye here so that's very crucial to get that down because if that's not down it's going to really change the look of the whole portrait so that's something that you really want to make sure you have down And of course, we're going to lighten this up in a little bit. There we go. Only Windows and Linux. Okay, great. That's fantastic. 
definitely going to look into that. I currently use Krita. I'm enjoying that. And what I like to do is isolate the photo, change the, put a different background behind it and play with it with that. And that seems to be working pretty well. As you can see, I'm just starting to hit some details, but mainly I want to make sure that I get the whole, you know, the ensemble and continue bringing it up together. And Mike says he dabbles with art rage, like GIMP even more so. And Jersey says, hey Tim, even though you have three different shade mixtures, how transparent are the mixtures? Very transparent. They are total transparency. Now, of course, uh, Joe, with the transparency, uh, as you go over it, it'll get darker anyway, but why I go with the medium, I mean the light, medium, and dark is because less, less going over it again and again actually saves the paper since we are working on paper and not board. So that's why I like using the light, medium, and dark. But yeah, these are 100% transparent. And that's why at the end, when we come in with the dark accents and the, the, the highlights uh, with the white pastel, it's when the work really sort of transforms. Uh, if I could show you uh, the last piece I did, uh, it's just sort of, it seemed like it was, you know, hovering in that medium range. And then once I came in with the darks and once I came in with the darks and the lights, it really started popping. So this is, you know, it definitely does work uh, with the mixtures. It's deliberate. It's just we have to be patient for that, patient for that to happen, for that to come together. So it really does, uh, it does work. It's a great technique. Uh, and the fact that it's something that develops really gives you a chance to fix any mistakes along the way. Oh, thank you, Diana. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Tone. Yeah, I enjoyed painting that one. It was a lot of fun. She was a lot of fun to paint. So as you can see, right now we're doing, uh, Joe, the medium mixtures. Everything is sort of in this medium range. But then it just sort of comes together at the end but doing it in a way that we're not oversaturating the paper, which really would ruin all our hard work and really cause problems that we don't want to have. And then again here, I want to make sure that I get these hard edges here. And we're going to go par perpendicular and not parallel. We'll worry about the direction of the hair afterwards. And of course, wipe off your freehand shield because it's going to accumulate some ink. And of course, uh, the airbrush I'm using is the Badger uh, Extreme Patriot Arrow and the ink I dilute my mixtures with are the Speedball Super Black India ink which is really my favorite ink because uh, it doesn't it doesn't clump up I mean it really works great for airbrush And Mike says, Tim, how much and how hard will it be to do the stone background once you start doing it? A lot easier than you think. Textures are a lot of fun. Uh, it's really not difficult. Um, you know, it's not like a face. If you mess up with a face just a couple of millimeters, 
we could all really see the glaring mistake but something like that you have a lot more wiggle room you just got to work on the uh, mic the texture okay so with her lips we do have some interesting things happening here um, well over here we have that light that sort of explains or or defines the edge work of her lip and then over here on this side of the lip uh, it's more of a light that defines the bottom lip and then right underneath we have the dark which is not part of the lip so once you decipher those things uh, that will go a long way to try and get a likeness but you have to decipher you know where that dark is coming the dark is not coming from the lip but from the indentation below the lip you see that so that's really important Everything looks very dark right now, but it's going to get lighter uh, as we darken, go to our dark mixture. So what we want to do is start getting some of the variations in the shadow. You know, where it's darker, go ahead and find those darker shapes. Because there are darker shapes inside the dark, and that's crucial because it gives a dynamic quality to the shadows. Remember, shadows are just absence of light, but they're not a void of light. So if it's just relative absence of light, meaning that light is getting there, so there's going to be details there. They're just going to be very quiet details, that's all. So on this side of the lip here, we do have sort of a dark line in between both lips there. My guess says you got a steal last week at Pat Catan's store that is closing. Wow, you got some uh, wire Createx two ounce bottles, uh, bottle racks for 30 bucks. Wow, that's pretty cool. So to put all your paints in, right? That's great. Were they going out of business? I hope not. everything how are your friends are you having a good visit oh how cool she's in Austin thank you Wendy I appreciate that Austin's very beautiful I hear That's so great. I'm so glad you're having a good time, Wendy. You deserve it. And like I said, I always like to move around, stuff like that. My guest says, Createx sells them 70 bucks each. Yes, they are going under Michael's Craft Store. Bought them out. Oh boy, that's scary. So I'm so sorry to hear that. Okay, so, uh, oh, Wendy says you guys keep doing online. Uh, it's great to see you, Wendy, and uh, I hope you continue having a good time.
Now, as we're moving around, we want to keep figuring like where are some areas where we can actually. Uh, oh, so Diana says uh, Austin is a great place, and she's. Uh, oh, so you're from Texas as well. We got a lot of Texas in the house. Very cool. And what part of Texas are you from there, Diana? And what I'm going to do is load up my brush just a little bit more. Now what I did was I went ahead and started putting in my dark mixture so I can get some of the definition here in the hair. And as I do that, you'll see that once I get that, then I can gauge my, my uh, mid-tones a little bit better. So right here, I'm looking at the hair. And what I could do is I can take this freehand shield here. And I could pretty much gauge how this is going to go so let's see so this comes out here now what i did it looks like i okay so i did get the drawing correct and what i'm going to do is maybe get a hard edge right here just just that one spot and of course perpendicular not parallel so you see that that I think helps just gives a little extra drama and I think that that is good now we do have some some nice uh, dark contrast going the other way so you see the darker contrast is in the shadow of the neck opposite of the hair and here the contrast is in the hair opposite the skin so you want to make sure you get those that shift there very important okay now when you do these, make sure you don't go over here because what will happen is if you're too far away, you'll start to get uh, this shape here and it'll be a real mess. So you want to make sure you're careful of that. So you want to be pretty close. And you see how I got that hard edge there? Okay, so that's how we're getting that. So uh, one do 100 bottles of two ounce paint for $1.50 each. Wow, that's amazing. Wow, you, you must have been in heaven with that, huh? That's great, so you're set for a while. I remember AC Moore was not carrying the uh, Frisket film anymore. And they were actually selling the uh, 18 by 24 rolls for like three dollars and I bought all them up so once you get into that position and you know you just have to enjoy the fact that fate was good to you right and we're just going to go ahead and just work on the shape of her hair now remember we want the hard edge here right and then over here we have a nice hard edge so we want to be looking at edges not just values and drawing those are incredibly important but you also want to be working looking at the edge work where is it really a hard edge like right here and then right here it gets pretty soft
and then here it gets hard edged again. And Mike says you got that right as long as you have the cash in the bank. That's where you get lucky. Wow That is so great man. Really cool So as you can see I'm pretty well established with the hair right now You want to make sure you don't kill your reference by overspraying on your reference, that would be bad. And what you can do is just use the air and dry it if it gets too wet. Now interesting here, we have a shape of shadow here. And there's a lot of ways you can do that shape of shadow. But, you know, which is the cast shadow from the hair onto her chest. So, it's a very soft edge. And what we want to do is get a pencil. And you can actually draw that out. And then erase it afterwards. So, with this particular shadow, what happens is, is that... You have a very hard edge where it meets her blouse. So we're going to make sure we get that hard edge. Right, so we got that hard edge, which is very important. And then over here, well, let's finish the hard edge here. So we have a nice hard edge here. Now over here, it's very soft edge with here. So as it's soft edge, you're going to see what I do is I increase the distance from the airbrush to the surface. And as you increase the distance, you get much more of a soft edge and, and it's lighter. So if we go back here, you can see what I mean about getting that edge. Of course, that edge is, is always is going to get sharp and we're going to even refine it more. Remember, edges of shadow are like the way different states border each other. Uh, they're not always square. Uh, they got... They go in and out and they interlock like a jigsaw puzzle and that's how shadow shapes are as well guys so we're going to let that dry give it a few seconds and what i'm going to do i'm going to use oh thanks tom so he likes that other view that's cool and mike says he needs to watch real close uh with the lace part uh yes that is uh it's it's difficult, but not as difficult as we think it is. We just really have to indicate it. We're not, you know, we're not uh, photorealists, so we don't go all crazy into everything, but just indicate it. But you see, as we watch how this cast shadow reacts as it's darker here and gets lighter over there, it's very crucial. So right here, it's cast shadow is interacting with her clavicle so you see how how just knowing a little bit of what's going on really helps and that one second rule so that's very important as well and also you want to see where things are going in and out you know
And, you know, we also want to make sure that we don't get too hard-edged in areas that are going to look uh, out of place. And how you do that is really pay attention to the edge work. You know, how soft, how close are those values together? And you see the values in the neck, you know, right here, which is her sternocleidomastoid muscle. Uh, that is uh, pretty pronounced, but, but the values are very close to the shadows over here. Same on this side with her neck. And also the shapes sort of meander into one another, you know, which is very important to see. And so when we're dark on this side, remember it only works when we also are dark on this side. Very quiet live stream, not many people. That's good, because the people who are meant to be here are always here, when they're here. It's funny, I've been doing this live stream now, uh, you know, off and on since 2017, but I've been doing it every week now for about a year and a half. And I'll tell you guys, you know, it. It gets busy and, you know, people come, people go, they come back, you know, it's all good, you know, it's, it sort of re-manifests itself. But, you know, I always promise to give you guys, you know, 100% and, uh, you know, answer any questions you guys have. And I think it's one of the best live streams out there. Only because I put a lot of money and time into this guys, you know? And I really love talking with you guys. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to just begin doing some of the detail of her blouse here. Like I said, it's not as hard as it looks. We're just, and then what we're gonna do. Yeah, me too, Tone. So Tone shared it, me too. I'm surprised. Uh, maybe Coast Airbrush is having a live stream or something. You know, it's all good. Like I said, the ones who, who need this are gonna be here. And those are the ones I'm doing the live stream for anyway. So now once I did that, then I can go ahead and get rid of the, uh, then I can just go ahead and get rid of some of these pencil lines. And then you see that the blouse really starts to come up. Tone says I make YouTube thing look easy. You know what Tone, we all take our lumps, you know, when I first started, oh my god. I had, there was one time Tone, it was so funny, everything was like echoing. And it was super loud and then everyone was like oh my god what's going on and then there was one time when it was this really loud screech because it was like there was some feedback issues just some funny things tone yeah you know it's not easy but once you do it every week you just sort of know the problems before they ever happen which is pretty cool so as you can see what i'm doing is just setting up later down the line. I think this is a job for the light mixture, so I'm gonna stay away from it with this darker mixture that I have now. As you can see, I adjusted the 
air pressure and that's going to give me a little more control depending on what you're doing when you're sketching a higher air pressure is going to be much better than if you're doing like real tight detail you know right here it seems like we have a little bit of a hard edge just this one spot I'm just going to put that in Then we're going to take our kneaded eraser because it's the softest eraser and we're just going to start working on this shape here and you don't have to get it right away it's just something that's gonna you're gonna eventually get there but with this soft eraser uh, you know it's not gonna dig into the surface so you can go back into it which is cool And so when we're looking at this, we can say, okay, so we can take our mono eraser, get a little more of a exact way to pull out a shape. Now I'm seeing that maybe I'm getting a little too small in that sterdoclytomastoid. Now remember, to look up that sternocleidomastoid. That muscle is a landmark muscle. And it's good to learn your landmark muscles because you'll be seeing them all the time. And it's good to know where they come from, what they're doing. That's going to help you, definitely. Now, here we have a really nice dark. And, of course, we're always looking at edge work here. And we have sort of a harder edge right over here. And again, you want to do that perpendicular, not parallel. Hey, hey, Bradley, good to see you. How you been? So glad you can make it, my friend. And... So as you can see, we're working on this shadow shape here, which is really important because it's, it's not just, you know, it just goes up. No, you got to see what's happening as it's hard and it has a little bit of a cast shadow here. And then it just sort of cast shadow falls into this dark area right there, this mass of dark. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. It's so cool, Bradley. And like, as you can see, I'm just going to refine that shape as we go because it's very important for her likeness. I'm not thinking about the likeness. I'm just continuing with the program. And right now we're in that medium mixture stage. Now we do see that the upper lip is significantly darker than the lower lip, especially on this side. So let's see if we can go ahead and maybe start to indicate that a little bit start getting in some of these shapes But it's important that we get that sort of contrast differential. As we see, we don't quite have it. So let's even dust over it a little bit and just make that darker. So it starts really getting the feeling of what's happening to her lips in space here. We can always lighten them up a little bit. But I think when we come in with the darker values around it, it's really going to start lightening things up anyway.
remember, the further you're away, the lighter the value you're going to be, the, the smoother the transition or the smoother the laying down of value. When you get closer, it's going to be more broken up and darker. So, in essence, you want to be further away as you can and go closer as you're doing more detail. Uh, that's always the best way to be. That's why working in dilutions is so important because then you're, you know, you're working with a darker value so you don't have to get so close to get that value. So that's another reason why the, the mixtures are, you know, really good to use. So same here, so let's go ahead and work out this part. And then maybe we can move into her chest area and see if we can make some of those values a little bit darker. But one of the things I want to show you is that I'm actually pumping the trigger and I'm moving around. So what I want to do is create some space in between the values of the airbrush strokes and what that does, it gives the impression of skin. And uh, it's a way of getting skin texture. And I like this way a lot because it teaches us to look as opposed to just using skin texture, skin stencils, you know? So, uh, brush stroke says uh, that uh, tone would do better with a streaming platform. It does make life easier. I use XSplit and I love it. You know, you can do a lot of different things. Uh, I can actually go ahead and go to, uh, you know, different, you know, different scenes. You know, you could see me while I'm working here. Uh, and then we can go to a website. You know, there's the website with the uh, airbrush that I use. So that really helps. So. Uh, definitely good advice there. Uh, one of the things that I like to do is I can go ahead and record this as I'm doing just now. I can record this as I'm doing my live stream. And in the future I can use this for, you know, for a number of purposes. So you see, you know, not just, uh, you know, working on values and, and also, you know, contours uh, and edges, but also texture and how you actually lay down the airbrush. So there's all those elements and, but, you know, I know it could be overwhelming, but little by little. So Tim says, I mean, Mac, Mike says, does the Mac valve actually work on the extreme? Uh, no, it works okay. I just like using an external Mac valve because I'm old school, so I don't even use mine. Uh, but that's what I would do. I, I would use an external Mac valve. I think it's much better. Uh, that's just my own opinion. Like anything else, I'll tell you exactly the pros and cons of every airbrush. So that's why I... I really, if you're going to get the Extreme Patriot Arrow, definitely use an external Mac valve. I like that a lot. Definitely. Uh, one of the things uh, also you want to look into is uh, your PC. Does your PC have a graphics card? Because that's really important too, Tone.
And over here, we have some beautiful hard edges here. So let's see if we could go ahead and put that in. Here, what you want to do, and his says it won't shut off or regulate quickly, so it's a waste of extra money in his opinion. Well, you know, that's something you definitely want to go ahead and, uh, you know, go on the uh, the Badger site, and they'll definitely help you out with that. They're really cool with that, Mike, so give them a shot, and they'll make it right if there's some kind of technical issue with it. Uh, uh, but I definitely definitely prefer using my own Mac Bell. And then I can create some more texture by just using my mono eraser here. But remember the one second rule is that you're looking for a second and painting for a second. And here's where you're going to start. Now, everything's going to get darker, but right now we're beginning the, the, the textures and the relative value changes. So it's not just this voided area, right? So, okay, the inline Mac valve is good, Mike, definitely. And you know, as I'm working, if I see something, then I'll go ahead and and address it. So here, I'm gonna have a good distance. There we go. Now that's a little bit. I think it's a little bit too strong, and I'm going to adjust that. But it's really important to let it dry. You know. Now, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get some of these shapes here. Well, I hope you get your same, I hope you get your, uh, your 2020 soon. Now, like I said, that was a little harsh, I feel, over here. I went a little too dark. So I can always adjust that. And we're in the early stages. Everything's going to get much darker as we come in dark with other values. And what I'm looking here is I'm looking for little shapes in those those values, not just the values themselves, but the shapes that are within them that sort of help describe the form. A lot of this is reflected light, which is your secondary light source, which is your primary light source bouncing off of objects, other objects back onto your 
object of interest, which is her face. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to dump out the medium mixture and I'm going to put in some light mixture in here. And I'm just going to get my light mixture. Where is it? There we go. Put that in really quick. And it's really easy to go from your one mixture to another. Just making sure that my airbrush is working correctly. And what I'll do is I'll just do some dagger strokes here, making sure I'm getting proper fades, dots. Okay, so I'm pretty confident I'm getting a good, good flow right now. So we're going to go back to this particular uh, Oh, thank you, Tone. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. And so let's see. So now we have the light mixture. So what I can do is I can do more subtle changes here and there. Just get a little more, a little more fine. And I don't have to worry about getting too dark. So let's see here. And I want to really show off the edge of the nostril here. So I'm going to pull out that edge right there. So there's other ways to get the hard edge, not just with the airbrush. You can also get that, uh, you know, with the eraser. Over here on this edge, I said we had to wait until we darkened up that area that I erased prematurely. So you can see after the fourth pass, it covers up nicely. So you want to have patience uh, not to go in and tear up the surface. It's very important to have that patience. So you see with the lighter mixture, Although it's not covering, I can do real more. I can do a lot more subtle detail because I can lower the. I can lower the air pressure, and I have more control. And if the value's not right, it's light, so it's no big deal. And I can still get really wonderful dark lines too. at this shape right here so I can see I'm a little bit off right so uh, 
what we could do is with the mono we could draw out this shape a little bit but we want to be real mindful of the edge work how these edges these values adjacent values actually interact with one each other if there were pieces of a puzzle how would they and these values are broken up right they're not just like a shape and a color but they're all these broken shapes inside and they're very irregular hey what's up Alan thank you so much good to see you man how you been so guys I'm gonna take a very very quick break I will be right back and uh, give me five minutes two minutes actually So thank you guys, I am back. Oh, I got these gloves I wanted to show you guys. Have you ever seen those uh, copper fit gloves? They're sort of compression and let me show you. And have you guys used them before? But I like them, they feel good. But then again, they kind of uh, start to cut off the circulation a little bit. But they're good for a while. So have you guys used them? Always washing my hands, my friend. <laughs> yes, right? That's so important. So how you been there, Alan? I do like that portrait you did of your friend. Uh, it was really nice. Good to see you. Yes, as seen on TV. I got these on eBay. A pair was only $8. So definitely get them on eBay, Tone. Uh, a lot cheaper. So good to see you again, Wendy. So what we're doing now is we're really looking to get this shape here right here which is so important and and also you know not only there but the shapes around here and we might as well do it when we have the light mixture again because if it's off it's easy to erase you know it's easy to erase which is much better Yes, definitely. Always, always great when Wendy's here.
Now, resist the temptation of just going into one big shape. Really see what's happening and don't just simplify the shape too much at this stage. In the beginning stage, yes, you want to simplify, but here you want to get a little more specific with the shapes. And the one second rule really is going to help, guys. Look for a second, paint for a uh, uh, They say it does help a little bit. Uh, it does give you some relief, you know, if you do have, you know, cramping up. So yeah, so you definitely want to make sure that you, uh, you know, look for those larger shapes, you know. So let's go back here. Oh, so Tony says the compression glove. Uh, the Chinese, uh, he uses those Chinese, uh, those like metal balls are really good to exercise the hands. I have a pair of them. I have to find them. They, they are pretty cool. They're good to work out, you know, your forearm muscles. So that's good. So Wendy says she went to a guitar festival, five and a half hour intermission, then Saturday over. Wow, that's a lot of guitar. Oof. Must have been cool. still want to make sure that we get this this shape here correctly this triangle shape is so important and it's much darker here Okay, Bondo, that's pretty cool. Hey, Jake, how you doing, man? Good to see ya. Thank you so much. And that one second rule is really gonna save your life, so. You're going to be painting for a second and looking for a second. And then over here is... Got to get rid of some of these pencil lines that are from the original drawing. And as you go, you'll see some pencil lines. And you're going to go ahead and erase them as you go, of course. I'm not worried about a likeness just yet. That's going to happen as I take care of all these, these shapes and edge work and everything like that. That's going to happen naturally. So I'm not worried.
And then what I can do is I can increase my distance, right? So right here, you see my value is a little high. So I can increase my distance and then I can just dust that over. And you see, I can do that, which is really good. Mike says his uh, fingers hurt worse than his wrists from turning wrenches for 30 years. Wow, pretty cool, the auto repair. Bondo is, uh, so what exactly is Bondo? I believe it's some sort of uh, putty, right? Used in like auto, auto repair, I think, like auto body repair. But I'm definitely not an authority on that, guys. Now I want to increase my distance here because I want to be ever so light here. And that's sort of the separation from the forward plane of her nose, the plane that's facing forward, and the side plane. So I want to make sure that it's light enough. Also, I want to make sure that I'm able to go ahead and reshape that as I go because it's not just a straight shape. There's a lot of ins and outs with this light area here. So that's why you definitely want to be in the, using the light mixture at this point because if you go in dark, you're going to make, you're going to make uh, marks that are just going to be too harsh and just throw the rest of the values out of whack and thus the painting's not going to go well. That's why the white, the light mixture is so important because it does, uh, and you can go back to the light mixture and go back to the medium mixture and then the dark mixture as you need. What you also can do is you can take your mono eraser and you can go ahead and uh, sort of shape the shadows, the lights in the shadows as I'm doing now. With that one second rule, you're looking for a second, then you're painting for a second. And then you can really see the, the shapes. Hey, YouTube watcher, how you doing? Good to see you, man. Thank you so much for coming by. So the dust on the Bondo is pretty bad, huh? I, you guys, you guys are the authorities on that, so I'll be listening to you guys there. Uh, but that's pretty cool. You, can, you know, that you guys have that experience in that. Mike says he's allergic to some kinds of people in work. I'm, a, I'm allergic to certain kinds of work, that's for sure. When I come later with the... Uh, well, I'm so glad that you always come by and, uh, you know, we always, always want to hear from you there, YouTube watchers. So, you know, thanks so much for, you know, stopping by. I appreciate that. So as you can see, little by little, we're getting to the point where we can start seeing things start to turn. So right here, we have texture as the forehead comes out of the cast shadow of her hair, just like here. So if I want even more detail, I can lower the pressure with the Mac valve. Hey, how's it going, Jose? Nice to see ya.
So what I'm doing is just sort of getting those transition tones from the cast shadow, which is very dark of the hair, into the forehead. And then it sort of comes into the, the highlight of the forehead, which is probably the most light facing area on this whole portrait. So that's why it's receiving the most light. But it does have a specific shape. And what we want to do is try and reiterate the shape of that light. And when we try to find the actual uh, shape of the light, then things sort of uh, come together. That whole sort of jigsaw puzzle type of thing. So I'm pumping that trigger and I'm just darking a little bit. And of course I'm going to be adjusting edges and uh, values as we go. So as we're doing that, we can definitely look and see like, okay, where can we fix it? What things can we do? So that's what we're doing now. And uh, very important to start to get that tapestry effect. come in here and we sort of hit this light shape we definitely come over here and reiterate this dark here that this dark is a little bit more massive right there and that's very important so you know you're going to see some drawing uh, refinements that need to be made and that's okay but the main thing is is that you when you see them to make sure you make those corrections don't shy away from making those corrections And I really like the way it's starting to uh, sort of come together slowly. It's, there's no rush, right? You know, even if you're under a tight deadline, you still don't want to rush anything that's going to inhibit the success of the painting. So you really have to take your time. Oh, yeah, you know, me too, you know, I really wish I can get it a little bit bigger. Uh, but let's see what I can do uh, just for part of the part of it. So let's go ahead and do this here for you there, Joe, just for this one part. I don't mind trying to uh, do some requests here and there. Once in a while. Once in a while. You're very welcome, Joe. Very welcome, sir. And see, I'm just putting in some detail there. Let me see, can I make it a little bit lighter? I think that's good, yeah. So let's go ahead and 
we'll do some detail here. And if I want to dust a little bit darker, remember I increase the distance and that helps out a lot. And of course we're always continuing to refine the shapes. Now if you want to make something lighter, you can either lighten it up or darken what's around it. And what we're going to do here is just going to darken around the bottom of the eye. Now what we can do is we can make sure we don't go a little too far ahead of ourselves. So going too far ahead is when you're working in this technique and you start going too dark too soon. Uh, what you want to do is you can lighten that up. And the reason why you don't want to go too dark too soon, you're going to draw the values off everywhere. So that's why going gradually dark throughout really helps. But these compression gloves seems that when I'm using airbrush, they seem to hurt me a little bit. So I don't think I have carpal tunnel. So this seems to be the most comfortable. So if you notice that, you know, there's a dark value, but a lot of times there's, a, there's some light values inside that value. So you want to really look and see what's happening with that value itself. A lot of times, you know, you'll see a dark shape or mid-tone shape, but in that shape is a lot of different values. And you want to eventually start to see that when you're painting. You don't have to iterate that in the early stages, but we're at the midpoint, and that's where... Uh, oh, okay, so there would be a pain. Now, I did get pains here and there, but that seemed to have gone away. So I think I get it, you know, once in a while. But I'm also working out with weights, and I think that also causes some, some pains. When I come in with the white pastel, things are really going to start getting a little bit better, you know? Okay, so we do have a bit of cast shadow coming from the dark right here. So I'm actually going to do this with pencil. So what I'm seeing is right here, it comes down and it's super soft. So I'm going to take my airbrush, make sure I'm getting a proper, and we're going to do some, I'm going to be a good distance away guys, because it's going to be very soft edge. So the further the distance is very important. And here it seems like it's darker uh, on the edge. And that's, that's very important to do that, to get that distinction. And then 
here it gets real dark. And you do that one second here, you're going to see those changes. Tone says he had to take six weeks off from March to the end of April this year because of it. Oh my God, I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah. Now, does anyone know that carpal tunnel is more prevalent with airbrush artists? Is it something that is a problem? It's something I really haven't really discussed with airbrush artists. So I use that freehand shield to uh, pull that out. Here it's a lot lighter towards that side plane of the face here. Here, it's a little darker value. And of course, we have a nice hard edge here, so let's use our freehand shield for that. Let's zoom out a little bit since we're working on the hair. Sometimes you, you'll go parallel with the freehand shield, but that's very rare. But when you do need to, definitely do it, such as this case here. Because it doesn't extend too far. But here, since it extends very far, going perpendicular is much better. Then we go one value down. Hey, Bill, how's it going? And like I said, everything is much darker. We're still in this mid-tone range. Part four, we're going to start coming in with the darker values. Here it looks like we can lighten up the values on the contour of a lower lip here. And there's a little too much contrast in this lip here, so on this side. So we're going to just go ahead and calm that down a little bit. And in here, we can go ahead and sort of work on some of the reflected light in this nostril. Okay, so what we can do is we can actually come in with some medium mixture now. Make 
pressure everything out. And actually, I like to shake these up just a little bit before I go ahead and put them in. A healthy amount. Okay, so I'm happy with the flow. So now we can start maybe coming in a little bit darker. And you see as we slowly darken things up, it's going to come together and we're really setting up for the white pastel coming up. Okay, let me go ahead and reauthorize the chat. Okay, great. There's everyone. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and we'll just now we're with that medium mixture, guys. So, you know, we worked, uh, did some detail with that light mixture, and that's really your detailed uh, stage. And you might need to go back, so you never want to do detail with a medium or dark mixture. Now I can actually come in and start enriching some of these beautiful darks. Same thing up here in the hair. Now I sort of neglected the top part of her hair. Now it's time to really work on pulling that hair forward. And you can crawl along the surface. You don't need a freehand shield that has the exact contour. You can just crawl along that surface and get the same thing. It just takes a little longer and a little more experience to do it. So you're really just using that one spot and going perpendicular you see that it's very accurate. If I was going uh, parallel then I wouldn't be as accurate I don't think. I tried it and definitely not as accurate. So you want that hair to come forward and how you're going to do that is having a very hard edge. And that's gonna pull the uh, hair from the background to the foreground. And what's behind her is gonna go back in space. So much like the way a uh, high aperture on the lens is. Now remember here, remember earlier we said it's nice and soft over here? So you want to keep that soft edge right here. It's going to give some nice, nice volume too. So see how nice and soft it is here? And that's really going, remember a variation of edges, variations of lights and darks, of your really high lights and your darkest dark. Uh, are really going to help you to make a painting look outstanding, different from the crowd, professional. So, and I want you to look for that. And that's going to be next level stuff. So, you know, you're going to have hard edge right here, and then maybe soft edge over here. See that? Then it's nice and soft over there. And then maybe over here, we pick up... Uh, 
let's see, right over here we'll pick up a nice dark, I mean a nice dark hard edge. So you see how the variation of the edges are really going to go far. Okay, so you see, you know, how that is. Get a little bit of glare here because it's wet. So I'll just dry that off. Now, if you ever see it getting too wet in one area, let it go. Let it dry. Don't, don't try and fix it. Uh, if it's wet, anything you do to it is going to be a disaster. So you want to make sure that you let it dry. Hey Rocket Ride, how you doing man? Good to see ya. Thank you so much for coming by. But notice how I'm constantly moving around. And those of you who've been following my live streams know that's very important. Remember, we're at that medium mixture now. And even at the end, we're going to come in with the white pastel and really get some of the variations of tone within the value, which is really good. So it's interesting too that you see like within the hair itself you'll have some hard edges and then separate one part of the hair to another. So like right here you have a hard edge that separates the dark. See that? That's very important. So we're at 11.15 already, which is pretty cool. We've gone far. So part five is next week, God willing. Now, I also seen that there was a part where, you know, you can always adjust. And then here, it looks like I can adjust this light underneath her eyelid here. When I come in with the white pastel and really uh, come in with the highlight, those eyes will come to life. So, making sure I'm not concerned with 
with a likeness because if I'm too concerned with a likeness I'm going to start doing things that are outside the program and then that's going to cause some problems you know So while you guys got me, have any questions about the technique? Anything that, uh, you know, you're having trouble with, uh, you know, maybe having trouble with control or anything? So let me know, guys, while you have me. Okay, going back to that high hard edge here, we're just going to there we go. So we get that nice hard edge, and that's what's going to separate her hair and have her hair sort of come out of those shadows of her, of her face come out of the shadows of her hair, which is pretty cool. Remember, we're with the medium mixture now. So we're going dark, but not as dark as we're going to. We're just looking for a relative value. It's sort of like, you know, you don't have the full dynamic range if you're going in, let's say, uh, photography terms. The full dynamic range has a full range of values. Right now, we're, we're sort of in the light value. Mike says, Tim, is it easier way to make the hair look real without scratching lines in for three hours? Uh, no, definitely. You don't really have to do any scratching or anything uh, or anything like that. It's just the main thing with hair or anything else is to really look for your values and look for your edges and there's so many different ways that you can do that you know and uh, you know you don't have to scratch the lights you can paint in the lights as I do most of the time uh, that's just one technique but with any technique or tips and tricks uh, if it's not rooted into really understanding your values your edges and uh, your shapes so you get those down and the rest will just fall into place no matter what uh, technique that you use so you see here what I'm doing is I'm setting up the values I'm setting up the large shapes so when the smallest shapes will be a lot easier to do and I can do that with let's say black beard weed or wire or what have you but the main issue is that that I'm working on the large shapes and value is king very true and uh, valued and edge work and and then you know the drawing it all those different things really come together and sort of help you but yeah I mean you'll see that I'm not this is not just like a hair tutorial or anything like that I'm going around you know you know it's part of the whole so I'm working the hair as well as everything up together Mike so it's not like I'm just gonna do the hair and the eyes and the nose but you see that everything's being worked up together and that's the way we want to do a portrait because then it becomes a cohesive unit right which is I think much better uh, than you know the sum of a bunch of parts it's definitely a 19th century French academic approach to painting and that's what I really want to do. Uh, Mike said, well, every time I watch your videos, it seems like I see nice strands of hair on every head you paint. Maybe it's my, uh, oh, yeah, definitely. That comes later, Mike, though, you know. Uh, so, you know, so, so let's say case in point, you'll see like a strand of hair. And I can get that down the line, right? But that's like the details within the larger shape so I hope that helps Mike
Oh, and a, a pack of lions. I could see that. Uh, yeah, sometimes I'll use a brush, Wendy says. That's true. And uh, I like doing that. And you'll see, I'll just do a case in point on the latest female nude that I did. That, you know, you'll see that most of the places I'm using using the airbrush but these real fine lines I'll be using the uh, the uh, the liner brush so you know it's you know but you can see how the hair is sort of those strands that you're talking about but that only comes after I do the larger shapes you know and this is like the very very end of the painting so but definitely just here and there not too much Thank you, Wendy. I appreciate that. And so, so that's basically that. So as you can see, it comes together slowly. And uh, so I guess, you know, we want to get the larger shapes first, you know, and that's what I'm doing, getting the larger shapes and then the lighter shapes as we go. So as you can see, we're working here, here, we work in the forehead. Uh, I want to make sure that we're bringing the rest of the painting up together. And then here. Uh, so Bradley says, is this going to be on sale on my site? Yes, after it's done, definitely, Bradley. So thanks for asking. And so we're going to have a nice uh, stone background back there. Uh, I think it's going to be a very interesting painting. So I can't believe we're at 1124 already, guys. Thank you so much for, you know, stopping by and hanging out with me today. And I really appreciate it. Thanks, YouTube Watcher. It's good to hear from you. So I'm so glad you came by. And Wendy and Brad and Mike and Alan, Jose, you know. Uh, you know, you guys are great. And I really appreciate it. Jersey Joe. So as you see, I'm just going to darken this area away. Uh, the female nude that I just finished, that's actually on, on my eBay, Bradley. Uh, so definitely check that out. Go on eBay. I'm actually, I'll send you a link on that. And that one's selling uh, a very, very low price right now. Oh, thanks, Joe. I appreciate it. Thank you for coming by. Thanks, Tone. And I uh, really appreciate you guys. So... So definitely, I'm going to post on the YouTube channel the, uh, the last nude that you've seen. This one is actually on eBay. So there's a chance to actually get this really low. Right now, it's only selling for $69. But it might go up, it might not. So it will be a good chance to get that at that good value. Mike says he's going to start selling snowstorm paintings. Uh, <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> hey, whatever sells, right? That's it. Oh, thanks, Bradley. Thanks for your interest. I really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. And all right, so it's 1126. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I just want to say thank you, guys. I hope you have a great rest of the week. Go ahead and email me if you have any questions. Always great to hear from you guys, okay? Take care, man. And ladies, men and ladies. Bye-bye, <laughs> guys.